Gina Rose is a mixed media artist from Barbados. Her works have been shown in the Caribbean, South America, the US, Canada, Europe, Africa, and Asia. Welcome, Sheena. Uh, thank you, Erica. So I want to uh, chat about uh, your art today. I know that you've had you've had recent work on Empire. Yeah. How was that? What was that experience like for you? That was amazing to see my work on TV, but I waited so long just to see it. Like I think I waited like. Um, almost two years. The first time I was invited and then it didn't quite work whole and then it came then it came back to me again. And then it was like, yes, I couldn't believe this was happening. So they have request a uh, black obeya and then um of course they asked permission and stuff like that. Right. And then when the season six was coming up, I was just there waiting for the episode and then I saw my work at first tiny and I was like, that's it. And then as each episode go by, it get bigger and bigger and bigger. And I just felt honored because for this show, this show is about successful black um, family and any art that was in there was like high end and it was like high quality work and, you know, and also like successful black artists. So when they had asked me to be part of the show, I felt like really honored and I felt like really excited. And I dreamt of one day being an empire, and there I am. I saw you, like, posting stuff on Instagram, and I, I'm like, wow, she's finally, you know, she's finally seeing her stuff on, on TV. So that's, that's mm -hmm. exciting. Yeah, huh? like, yeah. like, it was surreal, and it was exciting. And I actually saw the set when I went to Chicago two years ago, and it oh. blew my mind to see the set and to, yeah, see the process and stuff as well. Oh, wow. That's, that's really amazing. So congratulations on that. Another Thank accomplishment you. under your belt. Um, yeah. So uh, the one thing that really, I know, I know this is a project that you did last year, but when I saw it, it really caught my attention. And, and this is a mural that you created for the Inter-American Development Bank. So, I mean, tell me a little bit of, about that. Like, how did, you, how did you get the commission? And maybe tell me something about the process of creating the mural. Yeah, well, early last year, um, the Inter-American Development Bank approached me and they told me that they have this new space that they're building this staircase and it's for the K, for the KIC, K-I-C, Knowledge Innovative Communication. And I had to sit down and I had to brainstorm and think through how I would make this happen. And Two curators from the Inter-American Development Bank approached me. We were talking through it, and we were like, like brainstorming how how we would transform the space. And we came up with sweet gossip mess up with um the town, which is two of my bodies of word that we decided to mash up. And the concept was about the future. So since the Inter-American Development Bank, they wanted to show countries that they associate with which is the Caribbean and Latin America. Mm -hmm. And I asked, yeah, and I asked myself, is it possible for, for us to come together? Is it possible that we could literally come together um, with the Latin American and the Caribbean and knowing that we're like separated? And I decided to like look at the cities that they're associated with, like for instance, um, Suriname, Barbados, Trinidad, um, I believe Chile, Venezuela, and let's go on. It's like um, a lot of countries right. that they associate with. And then with the colors, I was angry. So I decided to put the color red at first. I was angry at how things sometimes are structured in Barbados and in the Caribbean. So I just put red at first. Then I put blue for the for the Barbadian sea. Right. Um, the dark blue for the reality of the sea, the reality of the space. Green for the landscape yellow for hope, orange for transitioning, and I think the purple was just more for aesthetic. Mm -hmm. So when I um, did three sketches, because it was like two and a half stories of the staircase, I had to go through like the green light to see if they got through. And I got all three like thumbs up, okay. flew down there, and it took about two weeks to get this done all by myself. Wow. And they were very like impressed and very like happy. Okay, very good. Thank you for that for that explanation. So 
I know like everybody see you now, you're basically, you're out there, you're getting your, your, your name is basically well known and they were like, oh, she's successful. And uh, some people don't really realize like the journey that you would have taken, uh, especially being a black woman in the Caribbean. Uh, yeah. Uh, what are some of the challenges that you face as an artist and as a businesswoman? That's a good question. Like, um, so funny, artists and business, business women, because I had to learn to combine the two. Right. We are never taught that art is business per se. We um, see it as aspiration, inspiration. We see it as just to express yourself. But as I go along and as I grew up, I realized that it is a business and you have to make money out of it. Um, you don't want to kill the creativity of thinking about the money, right. but at the same time, you have to live. So there is a weird balance and it's a very difficult balance as an artist because we're not encouraged or we're not aware that it's a business and we just would like to just freely express ourselves but there's a weird pressure and anxiety of dealing with amen stuff and taxes and all of those business stuff you know what I mean mm -hmm. um but as a businesswoman now too and as a black woman it's like I guess being a woman is just something just challenging. And then as a black woman, if you like people have these stereotypes of you as this aggressive black, you know, this, oh, you're so aggressive. You're, you know, you're so this and that. And then as a businesswoman, you still feel quiet because it's like, you know, like, you know what you're doing. So, and then being from the Caribbean as well, you know, so you got the artist, you got black woman, you got businesswoman. They got a lot of challenges on me. So therefore sometimes, Sad to say, I had to turn on a tone to be taken quite serious because people see the bubbly personality at first and then I switch gears and say, no, let's stop it. Let's do, let's deal with this, you know? Um, yeah. Okay. I mean, me, myself, as a, as a businesswoman, I, I actually am happy that I'm from the Caribbean because we're kind of outspoken. And so in business, especially like dealing internationally, that's kind of a good thing. Like you yeah. like know exactly where you are and, and what you're about and that some things you will do and some things you just won't do so uh for me uh but even coming here like from the bahamas to the corvin it's been a challenge because i had to kind of like readjust my attitude a little bit yeah yeah <laughs> because but, but when you say attitude uh what do you mean like you had well, to like i went down attitude, like the way i speak because one thing we speak quickly and and like they I don't know why why they have to think that you're aggressive but they automatically if you say something forcefully they say it's aggressive but it's just you making your point right yeah so, yeah uh, I had to say what I wanted to say in a softer voice but the same words would come out so yeah can't see it just it's like trying to accommodate and it's yeah. like it's so annoying because it's like you feel like if you're doing wrong all the time and it feel like wait I might my tone is too loud is it you know and I must bring up something that um that I feel that I could get off my chest a little bit then I feel like a trailer do 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 okay. no like <laughs> like last year I was so irritated now that we're talking about being aggressive and being a woman a black woman and so on I got British off my chest. I was so irritated that I aggress I addressed something uh, critiquing these particular artist work and people get very, very angry at me. And yes, my tone and my I was very sarcastic, but I didn't say the worst thing ever. But what got me is that I proved them wrong still. Because even though I was like sarcastic or not, even if it taught soft or even if it taught low, you still get critiqued. You still right. get criticized. And for me, I have proof a lot of people wrong. And because it's like you have to find ways, either if not to talk soft or aggressive, but even even the most dangerous part is quiet. Because I do move very quiet. And I do move behind your back. And then I'd be like, aha, got you now. Because mm -hmm. what happened is the thing that you're predictable being like, oh, you're going to snap at me. You're going to show at me. But actually, it's more dangerous when you're quiet. So for me, I am more quiet now because last year I would address lowly what I think of certain situations or certain pieces or artwork or trying to make suggestions of saying how you can become a successful artist from the Caribbean because there are these challenges. But if you don't want to listen, that's your business. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I even keep even more quiet now. So 
I'm exhausted by the stereotype and the idea that you're a woman, so I could easily criticize you. So therefore, I keep quiet and I become even more dangerous. Okay, it's a good approach. I think I'm going to try it out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so I know that there, there are many challenges in, in this uh, COVID-19 situation right now. And on top of that, you also have lupus, right? Yeah, yeah. So how are you managing <gasps> to cope right now in, in this time? It's so funny that I was here fighting with lupus for four years and didn't know. Mm -hmm. I didn't know when I received the Fulbright, um, which is a scholarship from the uh, State Department mm -hmm. and LASPO. And while I was studying, it really started off in 2015 when my eyes were swelling up. Right. And my eyes were swelling. The doctor told me it's allergies. Mm -hmm. My face will eventually start to swell. And it started to get really, really bad to the point I had to walk with for EpiPen wherever I go. Mm -hmm. You know, my throat would tighten. I would get hives. My feet would swell up. My hands would swell up. Even the point that I thought I was allergic to waves, you know, and mm -hmm. paint. And, and on the social media, I announced saying that I could be allergic to paint. I could be allergic to this. And I, we couldn't solve it. And one day I went, you know, I went to several doctors. They gave me medicine steroids all kinds of stuff and it wouldn't wouldn't disappear and I went to um Dr. Bullen I also got big up Dr. Hillary Moore and big up many other doctors even Dr. Cindy Flowers who mm -hmm. is my specialist right now for lupus but he I went to him because a good friend of mine saw a rash on my eye and I told her I give up my friend Daniel Archer and I said I give up I done I done I don't know what else to do and she said, no, man, she's not going to a dermatologist. Maybe he can help you out or something. Mm -hmm. So I went to him and I said, I got a rash in my eye. And at first it was a ringworm. I said, that's it. All of this stuff was a ringworm. Mm -hmm. He said, um, he said, no, but let's, let's see what else happened. So I had to, before I went to him, I had the vegan diet. Um, I tried to cut out some egg and milk and so on. Then when I saw him again, when I saw him, he told me he cut off the low celestialite diet. Um, cut off low salicylate is like the is this chemical in plants in in a lot of plants. Mm -hmm. So we were watching it. It had cooled down a little bit, but I was still breaking out and stuff. Then he said, "Okay, try vitamin D," and it had about seven to ten blood tests like in one go. And then one day he said, "Okay, we're looking for lupus or arrhythmia arthritis or something." And at first I cry, you know, because I didn't want anything to stop my art I said would this stop my art he said no I said okay good we good to go and the following week I found out that I was diagnosed with lupus mm. so I didn't cry I was relieved because I finally found out what it is that was causing me to be so sick yeah. and you feel very relieved because it's very scary when your throat is tightening like every two weeks or something and you got the EpiPen and you don't know what's happening and your allergy test came back like good you know so um right after I found out I'm not sure if you know about this too as well but it was held gunpoint oh yeah you did mention that I saw that on your social media yeah yeah I was held gunpoint a week after a week after yeah a week after um, that was scary. It was very frightening. Just to got a gun in front of your face. It, you see, like, it let your um your life flash in front of you. And I was like, this is it. You know, this is it. But then, honestly, I was cursing my head. I say, I'm not gonna curse, but I said, what the f? I was fighting with lupus, and you gonna f and take me away? F that. So the next day, um. So the next day, I flew out with my personal assistant, who is my cousin, to Dion Ali. And we flew to New York, and Barbados Tourism did a beautiful brunch for me. And it was great and amazing. But during that time, I was going through some PTSD, I think, or PS, PTSD. Um, post, yeah, post-trauma. Yeah. It was horrible. It was screaming in my sleep, everything. So mm -hmm. I mentioned that because right after that, then we had bad turbulence. And I'm like, what is going on? I mean, horrible turbulence from New York to Barbados. To the point, people were crying. Well, a lady was crying, and they had sleeping tablets to calm my nerves. 
And I said, okay, you know, you're going through a test. You're just going through a test. Lupus, gunpoint, and turbulence, you are going through a test. And now I COVID. Go, and now COVID. <laughs> but other than that, I find that I am finding ways to cope with it. Um, I'm meditating, um, yoga, gardening, doing stitching us um, with the mask, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I find I'm reading, I'm writing. And then I feel a little bit guilty, like, oh, I'm not working. But with all of that, I find that I'm working faster. Um, sometimes I do get very agitated because as an artist, you need to be, like, inspired. You know, you need to see stuff. You need to interact with people, you know. So it get a little bit stifling um, being stuck in a space because um, usually artists and people go to galleries. But then to see the gallery shut down, mm-hmm. you know, and you can see them on the internet, but it's still not the same seeing the art in person, you know? Mm-hmm. So I find that I'm coping it very well. Um, there are ups and there are downs, but majority there is a lot of ups. 